Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Brian E. Roach. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Brian E. Roach, uh, and I am flying solo today, flying solo, uh, and I am going to uh, take us through a wonderful post game. Why is it wonderful? Because the Steelers are nine and zero, nine and zero, and there's a lot of things about that number nine. Let me just talk uh, about that in a little bit. But uh, nine and zero uh, after defeating the Cincinnati Bengals in handle, handily, handily defeating them. Uh, it was a, a pretty decisive victory, thirty-six to ten. Uh, you know, for once, didn't really have to stress in the fourth quarter. But we did. I know you did. I know I did. We all did. Because uh, as as uh, I think um, one of uh, one of the folks I interact with a lot on Twitter, sports loving Melissa, uh, said, if you turn your back, then the Bengals will suddenly score twenty seven points and it'll be a game again. We all know we thought it. We did, but um, it didn't happen that way. So that's because we all paid attention, right? That's you know we know that's why it happened that way. Um, Steelers, you know, just never really let the game get close. Uh, it didn't start out great, um, and we may as well, you know, run through this. Look, uh, we'll run through the plays. We'll run through the drives, uh, get a sense of where, where things stand. Um, offensively, let's start there. Steelers started out, didn't look great. Uh, they come in, they go five plays for 18 yards after taking the initial kickoff because they, they lost the coin toss, right? Uh, they punt. But... Special teams comes in. Fantastic. Uh, Ola strips the ball. Uh, Benny Snell recovers it. They get the ball right back at the Cincinnati 32-yard line. Great. Fantastic. Uh, They don't do anything with it. They go uh, four plays for nine yards, kick a field goal. Everybody's worried. Why are you kicking a field goal? The winds are like 47,000 miles an hour. Uh, Everybody was talking about that early in the game. Strangely enough, that just went away at some point. Um, but everybody was talking about that, uh, how, how bad the wins were. But Boz apparently doesn't care because it's the Bengals, who he's never missed a kick against, comes in, puts it through. Uh, Steelers are up 3 nothing. Okay. Uh, they get the ball back again uh, off of a punt. Uh, and they go 11 plays uh, or 11 yards, three and out. And, and that, why does that sound odd? Well, because they started off with an Eric Ebron holding penalty that gives him, you know, first and 20 or second and t- whatever it was, 20. Anyway, 11 yards wasn't going to do it, so they have to punt again. Uh, they get again. After they punt, what happens? Well, on the first three series of the Bengals, punt, punt, punt. Fourth series was a fumble. So on that third punt, Steelers get the ball, six plays, 34 yards, kick another field goal. You're starting to feel nervous, I know. I was. That's two drives into the, into the Bengals territory, and he got six points, which means a touchdown puts the Bengals up by a point, right? Um, well, then the Bengals fumble the ball. That's two turnovers. This was a, a nice play by Cam Sutton. Rips the ball out, uh, which makes up for him going for a pass defense that he did not, uh, you know, get uh, missed and allowed the, a big play from from the Bengals. Um, but comes back from that, rips the ball out. Steelers get the ball. They, they, they get it. Uh, where did they get that ball? <laughs> uh, I think on their own 26. They got it on their own 26-yard line. Three plays, 74 yards. A highlight there. Ben to Deontay Johnson. A big 40-plus yard pass. Very nice. Pretty ball. But he can't throw deep, and he's holding them back. He's holding them back. Um, that's a refrain that's going to keep going because, you know, he's holding them back, right? He's not. Uh, they, they go down, drive down, touchdown. All of a sudden, it's uh, going to be 13 to nothing, right? No, because they go for two. They don't get it, and it's 12 to nothing. Still, you're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's 12 to nothing, uh, and then, sure enough, the next drive, that bugaboo of one-blown coverage costs them. The Bengals get the ball. Uh, At their 10-yard line, at their 10-yard line, they go 90 yards in eight plays, touchdown. The the biggest part of that, a blown coverage. T. Higgins, apparently they they forgot to cover him. Somebody forgot to cover him. I don't know who it was. 
Uh, but nobody covered him, and he was wide open. Joe Burrow hits him. It, he gets way down there, and then eventually they get in touchdown. Fantastic, right? You're sitting there. It's now 12 to 7. 12 to 7, and, and, and you know, you feel – we know what the history has been like with this team in these close games, and you're starting to feel that in your stomach, and you're going, oh, oh, not another one, not another one. That's about as close as it got, folks, uh, because at that point, the defense kind of stepped up, and the offense also kind of stepped up. Um, so you're, you're sitting at 12-7. Uh, Steelers get the ball back. What do they do? Um... They go down and answer. This is the, maybe the best drive of the day. Uh, I mean, Ben is crisp. Uh, you know, he throws the ball out. Uh, again, they try to run it. So he's incomplete to Juju. A nice little short pass to, to uh, Ray Ray, who you know gets all of four yards. Uh, then across the middle to Chase Claypool for, four, for 15, to Juju for 24, to Deontay, uh, which didn't go very well. That was a screen that failed. Um, but roughing the passer, when did that start? When did this, I guess what hap- had to happen was Ben had to get into his late 30s before the refs started feeling bad enough for him to call roughing the passer plays against him. Sam Hubbard goes in low, hits Ben in the, in the uh, lower leg, flag comes out. I get it. It's a penalty. I agree. It's, it should have been called. The problem is it never gets called against Ben. You know, Ben never gets those calls. All of a sudden this year he's starting to get these calls. I don't know how to live in this world. I don't, I don't understand how to live in this world. How do you live in a world where Ben Roethlisberger is getting roughing the passing calls? What are we going to complain about? We'll find something, right? Uh, <laughs> we'll find something. Uh, anyway, so that saves kind of, you know, bails him out a little bit on the drive. Uh, he, he tries to, tries to hit chase deep, misses. And, uh, then, you know, another tries to hit Chase again and misses. Uh, and eventually, Juju for eight yards, touchdown. Now, 19 to 7. Starting to feel slightly better. Maybe this is going to go the right way. Cincinnati gets the ball back. Basically, doesn't do much with it. Has to punt. Uh, a big 50 yard punt. Steelers get the ball back. You're thinking, all right, let's finish them. Let's take the ball down the field, finish them. No, uh, we, 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 we end up, uh, you know, getting down to the two minute warning. Um, and you know, essentially we get into field goal range. It's not too bad. You'd like a touchdown. You'd like a touchdown, but you get a field goal. Another field goal from Boz at the half 22 to seven. Feel pretty good. Same time. You know that this team, you know that this team has been a team that has not put together a consistent game yet this season, right? It's always one half goes one way, the other half goes the other way. So you're wondering, is, is bad, you know, bad Ben coming in in the second half? Are we going to have one of those games in the second half where we're just going, oh, God, I can't believe this. Uh, you know, no, doesn't really work that way. And the Bengals did get a shot at the end of the, uh, of the first half, and the defense – the defense looks like it's going to give up a field goal. Let's be honest. The Bengals get down close enough, and then what happens? Mr. Grown-Ass Man himself, T.J. Watt, this was an awesome sack. <laughs> it's just an awesome sack. I mean, he just basically said, no, I don't think so. Not on my watch. Bleep, you guys. You're not getting points. And he, he swam right by uh, the tackle and uh, kind of leveled Joe Burrow. And that was it. So they don't get any points at the end of half. And, again, the half ends 22-7. So, you know, that's again, that's the kind of story of this game. Bengals get the ball first, uh, and, you know, they go essentially three and out. Now, here's, you know, here's a nice thing. They get a first down, but then they go, so it's really four and out. Because they got a first down on the first play. They gashed the, the Steelers for a little bit of yardage on the run. Uh, but not as bad as it had been in the past, which I, is good. Um, Steelers get the ball back. They don't do anything with it. Bengals get the ball back. They don't really do anything with it. Steelers get the ball back. Chase gets a touchdown. All right. Steelers drive right down the field. Uh, Ben looks good. Uh, and they hit Chase Claypool for 11 yard touchdown, 29 to seven. Now, of course, we're all panicked that it's going to be a fourth quarter comeback and the bank are going to make this close and we don't know how to react. 
uh, it never happened. It just never happened. By the end of this, the Steelers get another touchdown. Uh, Chase gets his second of the game. Uh, and did we get another field goal? I don't remember. What was the final score of this game? 36-10. <laughs> no, we didn't get another field goal. Um, so, you know, the Bengals got a field goal. So it ends 36-10. to 10. The game is never in doubt um, by the time we get to the second half. It just is in close. Look, here are a couple things that were, were really uh, amusing to me. Let's talk about third down efficiency. The Steelers weren't fantastic at this, all right? Uh, they were 6 of 30, or 6 of 16 for 38%. But you know what? The Bengals were 0 for. Big, fat, hairy 0 for 13. Uh, they did not convert a third down the entire game. They did convert two fourth downs, one uh, as the waning parts of the game, and everybody's going to complain about a special teams breakdown. Look, they're down 36 to 10. Oh, yeah, now's when you call a fake punt, right? They called a fake punt. The Steelers got caught. Let it go. Um, it is what it is. I, I was more annoyed by the fourth down uh, touchdown, where, to me, they got to press that a little bit more. T. Higgins was just easily open for that touchdown uh, that, that they got on fourth down. And, you know, it would have been, think about it, it had been a three-point game. Uh, they'd only given up three points. Uh, to do that now again I'm going to I'm going to give some credit here because the Bengals had been putting points up it's not that their offense is fantastic but they had been scoring they came back on uh, you know a lot of teams and made some of those games close they didn't win them but they did make some games close they put up a lot of points on the Tennessee Titans so you know let's let's be honest this is a team that had been scoring a lot and they didn't they didn't much here. The Bengals, uh, you know, the Steelers defense made Joe Burrow look like a rookie quarterback, as they should, as they often do. And uh, Ben, Ben plays the way he plays when he plays against Heisman, <laughs> Heisman winners, right? He's like, no, nah, I don't think so. Hold my beer. Um, so, you know, here, here's, let's just run through these, these stats real quick. Uh, again, the running game. Nothing to speak of, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, James Conner, 13 carries, 36 yards. Benny Snell had some cleanup work, 3 for 12. Ben had a carry for nothing. Uh, Ray Ray had a minus 1 on one carry, and Chase Claypool on two uh, jet sweeps that they tried to do. One was, uh, you know, uh, I think a reverse, 2 for minus 3 yards. Um, but Ben had a really nice game, 40, 27 to 46, 333 yards, four touchdowns, uh, and 110.1 rating. But as we all know, the national media is aware Ben is holding them back. He's holding them back. If only, if only Ben Roethlisberger was playing better, they would be what? How can you be better than 9-0? and He's not holding them back. It's ridiculous. Uh, I'm so sick of that narrative. But, man, we're going to keep harping on it, aren't we? Because it's ridiculous. Um, he spread the ball around a lot. Uh, Ray Ray had two catches. Uh, James Conner had two catches. James Washington had two catches. Eric Ebron had two ca catches on six targets. Uh, Chase Claypool had four and two touchdowns. Deontay had a, a nice first half, six for 116 and a touchdown. Kind of disappeared in the second half, but I guess, you know, hey, that's why Chase was there. And, again, I'm going to talk about this in a second, too. Uh, Juju, nine catches, 77 yards, and a touchdown. Look, that's the thing. I mean, you know, people people are saying, and I talked about this already. People are saying, you know, you can't just run the ball, or you can't just throw the ball. You're gonna you gotta have a balanced offense. But with this passing attack, with these this group of receivers, how do you hold them all in check? There's too many of them. One of them's gonna get open, and Ben is good at getting rid of the ball. He's he's as I said, the fastest gun in the West right now. Um, so you know, it, it's nice and and. I think we should enjoy that. Yes, I, I'm with the we need to run better team. Uh, you know, uh, team. I'm on team. We need to run better, and we do. Um, but I, I do wonder how much of this has to do with the fact that this offensive line, um, as they got uh, you know synced to together over over time, used are used to running. Uh, you know, maybe not for the last couple of years, obviously, but they they ran they ran a lot of zone scheme, right? A lot of zone blocking. And it's different than when you're trying to do head-to-head -head blocking. This is a this is a finesse type offensive line. They do very well pass protection for the most part. Yes, they can get beat at times, but for the most part, they do very well at pass protection. 
but they've had tough times running the ball. Um, I want to bring up a point that Kevin Dotson was unavailable to them during this game. Uh, whether he's got the COVID uh, or not, um, you know, he he was unavailable uh, due to an illness, and he's in the protocol for whatever I think the COVID protocol at the moment. But when they have had success running, Kevin Dotson has been actually in the game, I'm pretty sure. I haven't gone back and looked at it, but it struck me today, you know, it's a different kind of uh, blocker. Kevin Dotson is is a guy who is a grown-ass man, a grown-ass young man, but a grown-ass man, and he will push the, you know, push the line. He is dominant. He's a strong, strong dude. Um, and when they've had a lot of success running, I feel like he's been in the game. I could be wrong. I have to go back and look, but I think that's the case. Uh, and, and I think it's noteworthy that, you know, when he's not around, they have, they've had a hard time, uh, running the ball. Um, so I, I think, I think it's addressable, I guess is where I'm trying to go with this. Um, they get Dotson back, uh, they can move forward, and, and it's addressable. I just want to make a, a quick note. There's a buddy uh, of mine. Uh, his name is uh, Maurice Bryant. Some of, uh, some of the listeners may know him, may not know him. Uh, he's one of the admins in a, a Facebook uh, Steelers group called Steelers Life, um, and he's got, he's got COVID. Uh, he's in the hospital. He's got some fluid in his lungs. So, uh, you know, Mo, we're thinking about you, man. Hope you feel better. Um, and uh, at least at least they won, right? Dude, that's got to make you feel somewhat better. Uh, so hopefully you can send your best wishes out to him uh, to, to get better. Uh, I think this was – it was a nice win. Yes, there's, there's some warts on this one. But the, the thing – you know, with everything else, I got to bring this up. And, I, you know, I talk about these people all that much. And I've said many, many times when you make your living with your foot and that's what contacts the football, you, you know, you never know. But I need to know where Jordan Berry is. Where, where is Jordan Berry? Where is Jordan Berry? Because the guy they have punting the ball right now, I don't, is that Jordan Berry? I, I, he's going to get drug tested. He's going to get randomly tested. Dude had like a 62-yard punt. Uh, you know, he nailed four punts inside the 20, pinned them back, uh, only had one touchback. His average was 49.3 with a net of 44.6. Seven punts, 345 yards. Who is this guy? I guess getting cut was good for Jordan Berry because, uh, you know, he came in and said, uh, I, I can't just shank these punts anymore. What a, The last couple weeks, dude has been punting the ball like a – I I can't. I can't do it. I cannot call kickers or punters. They don't get GAMs. I'm sorry. They just can't. I, I, I love you, Chris Boswell. You're awesome, but you can't get a GAM. And Jordan Berry, neither can you. So, uh, but you, you might be on the roids. Are you on the roids? Because I, I don't know. I, he's going to get randomly tested. He's kicking the ball too well. Uh, it's out of character. I don't understand. Anyway. Uh, another nice special teams uh, thing. Ray Ray finally had it all, so close. Man, I thought Ray Ray was going to go all the way, way. Didn't work out that way. Uh, you know, the punter, he tried to juke the punter. The punter slowed him down enough so he gets caught from behind. But he had a nice return, 42 yards. Uh, it was nice to see. And, uh, again, I'm going to say this. <laughs> Man, isn't it? Do you not? You don't feel the same level of stress. When the Steelers are in punt receiving mode, do you? You just don't feel that nervous right now. You, you you're like, we actually have a chance to break one of these. And in fact, the nerves are, is this the one he's going to break? Whereas you used to just go, okay, they're punting. I don't need to watch this because nothing's going to happen. Now you kind of have to, don't you? Uh, so Ray Ray can play play. I I, I like Ray Ray. Uh, you know, it's good. It's good. Everything is good. I'm very excited. I'm very happy. Um, I, I, and I can't complain. Look, uh, the Steelers, uh, let's look at what I projected. I put some bold predictions out on Twitter early in the, in the game, uh, that basically said, I thought because of the, of the bad run defense that the Bengals had, um, I, I'm going to own up to my complete whiff. I thought James Conner goes for a hundred plus. I was going to have a day that didn't happen. He did not have a day. Well, I guess he had a day. It was just not a good one. Um, I also said Chase was going to get 100 yards plus. 
uh, and I was wrong there, but I did pick him for two touchdowns, and that I was right about. Um, the hundred yard receiver was Deontay, so I, you know, somehow I mixed him up. It's not, you know, it's okay, it's okay. Um, and I think I said eight sacks. They did not get eight sacks. Uh, I think what they get. Let's see, four. So I, uh, you know, it's halfway. Um, and it did seem like it took a while to get that sack. Look. I was watching this early on, and they the pressure just wasn't there early in this game. I don't know why. I mean, they were rushing three guys a lot. Uh, whether they were trying to do uh, some other things, I don't know. But it just didn't work. Um, they were not getting home. Uh, but as the game progressed, man, they sure did. And, uh, you know, T.J. Watt, he had, I think, two sacks. Uh, Bud had a sack. And uh, Robert Spillane, Spilly. Spilly had a sack. Um it, it, defense really came in, I, and I got to give a shout out to uh, the old man in that room, Joe Hayden. What a game! What a game Joe Hayden had. Kind of a grown ass man kind of game. I mean, T.J. Watt gets grown ass man for the the sacks and and whatnot, um, you know, and 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 all that. But Joe Hayden three pass breaks up all you know third down. Dude was balling. Um, looked very good, especially considering some of the articles. Uh, I have seen recently talking about, we have to get rid of Joe Hayden. He needs to go. Joe Hayden said, hold my beer. <laughs> I don't think so. Let me show you how it's done, young man. Uh, he he was nice. He, he played very well. Really nice game. I, I can't complain about that at all. Um, from the flip side, the Bengals. You know, Burrow, I, I got it. I, look, Joe Burrow looks like the real deal. Kind of. I mean, you know, he gets some protection, gets some sync with his receivers, um, you know, get a little time under his belt. Joe Burrow looks kind of like the real deal. Uh, I just, you know, he, he here's a guy who looks like he can play. Uh, I, I was kind of impressed. And I haven't watched. I really have not watched the Bengals play. Uh, so, you know, this was my first real exposure. Now, you're not going to tell that from uh, this game. 21 of 40, 213. Uh, he did have a touchdown, but his passer rating 76.4. Uh, you know, he, he didn't get a lot of help. Uh, and T. Higgins had a nice game, 115 yards, had a touchdown, uh, seven receptions on nine targets. Tyler Boyd, six on eight. A.J. Green is a non entity in this office anymore. Five targets, no receptions, none. Uh, the glove was on him, Stephen Nelson was on him. So those of you calling for Steven Nelson to go away too, ha, take that. Um, Perrin uh, was their leading rusher, 48 yards. Uh, Gio Bernard had eight for 30. They did rush for 139 yards. I'm not thrilled with that. Uh, but, you know, you just can't really pick this game apart too much, can you? Uh, you know, 36 to 10. Pretty decisive. It's one of the best uh, games the Steelers have played as an overall unit, uh, other than the Browns game. Maybe they just need to play AFC North teams. They can't play anybody else because uh, they, they, I don't know, they don't adjust well or they don't, they're not, I don't know what it is. They, they don't have a, the complete attention of the Steelers or something. I, I just don't know. But the two most complete games they've played have been against the Browns and the Bengals. Maybe it's just because Ben likes to play against Ohio teams. I don't know. Um, what else can we say about this game? You know, it's <sighs> the running thing. Like I said, the running, the running game is, is a concern, but I think it can be addressed. Uh, they do have to figure out how to deal with it. Um, but in the meantime, you know, a lot of teams do this and, and the Steelers can do it too. Short dump off passes, uh, quick screens, uh, over the middle stuff can take the place of the running game all right all it is is you're trying to get people to come up in the box to prevent that from happening right so they don't fear the run so they're staying back fine dump the ball off eventually they're going to come up and you get the chance for the for the for the big score there the long the long ball uh and wasn't that a pretty long ball to deontay johnson that been through i mean he, he look he hasn't been perfect um, the, the long ball has been off target many times. There's a couple to chase Claypool that looked like they were a little long. Um, 
But, man, that was a pretty ball to Deontay Johnson. And some of the other balls that he threw were really nice. He put, you know, one of Chase Claypool's uh, touchdown, touchdowns was between two guys. He put it where only Chase could get it. Uh, ben is playing really well. And uh, for all of the, the national media that doesn't want to talk about him as a potential MVP candidate, I say to you, uh, you're, you're nuts. You're crazy. Um, he is not holding this team back. He is dragging this team forward. Uh, ben and his receivers are doing so. Chase Claypool said at the end of the game, this is yet another week where Ben is essentially drawing plays up in the dirt. Um, I'm not going to call for Randy Fickner's head again. Uh, at this point, it is what it is. I find the play calling to be somewhat unimaginative, but I'm not going to give Ben all the credit either or Randy Fickner all the blame. Uh, as I said last week, there are certain plays where Ben needs to check out of and he's not. Now, <laughs> whether he's not checking out of him because he's decided, uh, you know, that's what you called. I'm going to run what you called. I know he got that way with Todd Haley, but Fickner's supposed to be his dude. So I don't know. Um, you know, it's it's not... A finished product yet these guys are still syncing up and and that's fine <clears throat> as far as other uh grown-ass men i think i gotta give ben a grown-ass man award for this game i think i kind of do um because hey you know 333 yards four touchdowns i guess you kind of deserve a grown-ass man award and then i gotta take it back why uh, the one, the one, the one play where Ben's gonna block, right? Ben is gonna block. Oh no, that was just too funny. I, I, no, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give it to him. He, he shouldn't have been out there trying to block, lead block on that. And he knew it too. He stopped. He's like, I, I don't think so. Um, so yeah, Ben gets a grown ass man award. J, uh, Joe Hayden gets a grown ass man award. Uh, I kind of have to give Deontay Johnson one for the first half, but as I said, he just kind of disappeared in the second half. I don't know why that was, uh, other than I think Chase was open. Ben was focused on trying to get that ball to Chase in the second half, it felt like. Um, and and I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, this this team is 9-0, and and Chase Claypool has nine touchdowns on the season. Um, I, I don't know. There's something about this kid. Look, as I said, I don't, I don't usually buy rookie jerseys. I just don't do it, right? Because I, I don't, I usually wait until after the first contract because I don't know. But there was this feeling about this kid uh, and, and, and what he could potentially provide. And I think it is, is really a special kind of, of relationship that's going on right now between Chase Claypool and Ben. And, and Chase is definitely emerging as a guy who has got to take attention of a defense. That's helping Juju. That's helping Deontay. It's helping Eric Ebron. It's helping everybody. Because, you know, you can't just say, I'm going to take Juju away anymore. You can't just say, I'm going to take Deontay away anymore. You can't say those things. Um, because Chase is there. And, and just, again, the the breadth of targets that this team has uh, is pretty impressive. So, it's a great celebration, 9-0, and very happy to have it happen, right? Um, you know, I wish Joe was here. He would elaborate more. He'd get more into the details than I'm going to get. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. The refs still stink, by the way. They still stink. Uh, but I can't really call them out too bad about this uh, game. Yes, there were pick play. The one touchdown that the Bengals got was a pick play. No question about it. It was a pick. It should have been flagged wasn't they stink but at the same time they called the holding penalties that i felt like they should have called they missed a ton of them because they were getting the, the steelers defense was getting held constantly they're gonna get held constantly they're just too damn good um and they're gonna let some of them go through and they're going to cause some of them to you know get called when they're blatant um but I can't really complain about them too much. Again, it felt like at least they were moderately consistent in what they were doing, uh, and and that's all I ask of them. So uh, I held off. I don't. I think I only sent the the refs uh, the refs stink uh, gif out once this this game, and you know I'm not going to complain nearly as much when <laughs> uh, when when they win like this. And and the Bengals may have gotten Riveroned. 
I, I really do think that one catch uh, by Tyler Boyd on the sidelines was an awesome catch. I thought it was good. I thought his feet both came down inbounds. The angles were terrible, which I know Joe uh, has ranted about the fact that we don't have down-the-line uh, cameras available. The camera angles were awful on that. Uh, I thought they got hosed, um, and I thought they got river on because I really thought, uh, you know, he Al Riveron hates the Steelers, so I sh- was sure he was going to overturn it. So was the rest of the Steelers nation. Everybody thought on Twitter it was going to be overturned, and then when it wasn't, I guess we had to realize that maybe it's not just the Steelers he hates. Maybe he hates the AFC North. I don't know. Maybe he just hates the Bengals too. I I really don't know. Um, but you know, it's it's nice it's nice to go. Uh, into Monday with another victory Monday. It's nice to have a 9-0 and team. Never happened in the history of this franchise. Can't get another, you know, gonna can't do as bad as last year. Worst they can do now is 9-7. and seven. Knock on wood because that's not going to happen, right? Um, this team's uh, looking good. Jacksonville comes up next. It's been a tough place for them to play in the past. Uh, Joe and I, hopefully, will get together again and talk about that. Uh, and in the meantime, I think that's going to probably wrap it up. Um, what else is there to say? Nine and oh, baby. Nine and oh. I like it. A uh, lot, lot to look forward to. This has been a hell of a season. Let's keep it rolling and, uh, and move forward. So, again, uh, just as we always say, thank you. Thank you very much for the commentary. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, we look forward to your commentary, uh, even when you say bad things. We still love it. I love it. Every, I love it all, right? I love it all. Uh, love your commentary. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, tweet. You know, I, I get a lot of grief. I gotta, I, I'm going to get this out of my way real quick. I get a lot of grief because I don't have a lot of followers on Twitter. So if you can help me get over 1,000, I will stop getting grief about not having 1,000 followers on Twitter. At Cannons Don't Thun, if you want. If you don't, it's okay. I, I don't, it doesn't really bother me that much. It's just... There are other people who get annoyed with me about it. I won't talk about it any more than that. Okay. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up for us here. Steel City Underground Podcast. Again, my name is Brian Roach. Uh, I left out the E because we ended early. How about that? I don't know. Uh, until next time, uh, as I like to say, uh, be safe. No, that's what Joe says. I don't say that. What do I say? I've forgotten. I'm old. Uh, as I like to say, it's chaos out there, so be kind. And again... Mo, get better, man. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.